Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and today I'm going to do a quick snip review on this Airfix Hawker Hunter. This is the 148th release, this is the latest, it's actually a re-release of the initial kit which features this really quite striking box art showing the occasion when Flight Lieutenant Pollock flew a hunter through Tower Bridge. Uh, <laughs> he did this as a form of protest at the, the lack of official recognition being shown to the Royal Air Force's 50th anniversary. This was in 1968. So I've not seen this kit before. I haven't even checked the box contents of this one yet. Uh, this one has been lent to me by the lovely Matt at Matt's Modelling Den, as with the Sea King. I'll try not to butcher this one for him, but as long as everyone keeps quiet, he'll never know. So before we look in the box then, the price, on this particular kit, uh, retail priced via airfix.com is forty six ninety nine. You may note from my voice that I feel that's maybe a touch pricey, perhaps. Um, quick internet search gives results ranging from thirty seven fifty to forty forty two pounds. So you should be able to pick one up at around the forty pound mark online fairly easily. So. Let's have a look inside. Instructions. Oh, Matt hasn't even had a look yet either. Well, Airfix super nerds like myself will straight away note the different plastic. This is the darker coloured, the darker grey plastic. Now obviously the actual colour of the plastic is borderline irrelevant, but here's, our, here's the normal standard light grey plastic. And this plastic has been roundly criticised on many occasions by many different people for being soft. Uh, it does warp very easily, or seems to, uh, and it likes to hang on to sink marks like a washing lady's grudge. This plastic is harder, um, and obviously it's a little bit darker in colour. The colour itself is pretty much irrelevant, truthfully, but it's the different plastic that's of note. Separate everything out. And we'll start things off by having a quick look at frame A. <clears throat> Denoted on the tab here. Quite subtle, you do have to look for it. So, clearly this is mostly about fuselage halves. Um, and they're quite, quite excitingly moulded. Look at that big blank section there for a spine insert. We have the two different tails here, so you've got the one with the big fairing on the top and the one without, I think that's the earlier one if I'm not mistaken. Uh, intakes down here, two parts each, a couple of pylons at the top. So first impressions of the surface finish and scribing are reasonable. It, it has a, a, a marked texture to it visually and you can feel it the panel lines aren't too massive but they're not super sharp either they're not terrible by any means they're not quite just as crisp as you might like the tail the surfaces of the finner are actually considerably better throughout Sprue B, here, you've got the wings. So you've got a, a great big single piece moulding here with the upper wing surfaces and that entire upper fuselage moulded into it. On the face of it, a really nice idea. It's, it's removed any problem that there might be with a seam all the way down here. It does add the possibility of one at the front and the back, however. And of course it also removes 
any issues you might have with the wing seam. So on balance this is probably more efficient. You've got your lowers here, tail surfaces, a couple of drop tanks and some rocket pods. Got some internal detail for the wheelbase here which is really rather nice. And it is fairly basic but it's quite nicely done. Quite like that. Numerous ejection pin marks but I don't think any of them are in places where they matter. Should be okay. And we do have a bit of flash and some wooliness about the mouldings down here on these. I don't know if that's picking that up. Tail surfaces. I think that must be the rudder. They will need a fair bit of clean up to get them looking nice. Spruce C. Do you like how I've done them in order? It's very professional of me, I think. This is all your smaller parts, details, details, details. So uh, these appear to be wheel bay parts here, walls for the wheel bays. Have a little bit of wiring on them. Uh, there's an instrument panel here. Parts of the cockpit tub. Wheels look quite nice. Wheel hubs there. Undercarriage legs, undercarriage doors. Nose cone and cockpit tubs there. Again, relatively basic, but this is a very early jet and they were relatively basic. And here we have an ejection seat cushion. And interestingly, Airfix have supplied two versions one with moulded in belts and one without. I think moulded in belts are one of those things, they're, they're a bit marmite, aren't they? Some people. A lot of people complain about them. I don't mind too much, honestly. I think, especially if a canopy is closed, with a bit of careful and considered painting work, they they can be very, very adequate. But of course, if if the preference is to fit photo etch harnesses or not to fit anything at all, that that option is there. Also, the rest of the seat is just there. It's all very, very competent. There's no flash on this sprue. It's all. It's a little bit chunky, but it's quite nicely done. I think I think that's probably fair. Then here we have sprue F, and this is some alternate parts. I think I'm probably right in saying this might be new for this release. Um, the Airfix site does proclaim that there are new parts within, but it doesn't then tell you what they are. Um, and I don't follow these things strongly enough to remember off the top of my head but this is another different tailpipe than the two that we already had and a different nose cone also a jet pipe to go with that and we've got a hook an arresting hook here and the last one is frame D so did I didn't do it in order oh well I'll go back to being an amateur. Different uh, external fuel tanks, another different nose option. Uh, and these are the cutaway flaps to clear said fuel tanks. Clear parts then are over here. in a separate bag but this bag was in the big bag with all of the other sprues and the other sprues are not packed in bags and as a result of that there is some fairly pronounced chafing on these parts it's so hard to see whether I'm showing this the top of this canopy the sort of cloudiness you can see that's all chafing it should polish out reasonably easily but it is there the same on this one just at the front edge and actually even the windscreen the uh, windshield this side glass is, is quite badly chafed then there's this these sort of sprue danglers um, these two have been knocked about 
uh, this one is almost detached and it has scarred the canopy because of it and in fact the main sprue attachment here is pretty much broken as well um, and I suspect that there will probably be some damage to the canopy frame there as well in every other way they're very typically airfix they're quite nicely done they're not the best but they also are not the worst the frames are slightly on the heavy side raised we've also got wingtip lights and a couple of lenses completely standard airfix instruction booklet then just paper A4 put your info on the front on the aircraft and then the first page is your, your modelling and assembly notes with the icons down there and absolutely standard airfix throughout the shaded 3D style with the colours to indicate the previous step all that stuff cockpit first Uh, this does have various versions and all sorts of options to be aware of throughout the build that will pop up and they have the scheme letter reproduced at each stage so it's fairly easy to keep track of this. There's not so many steps in it that it's going to be a huge effort to keep up with I don't think. But they are quite good with, with showing you where things need to be drilled or looked at. There's a bit there saying to file off a tab at the back. 20 grams of nose weight. There's that great big top wing popping on there. Different tails all detailed. Different drop tank options. Building up the wheel wells down here. Sorry, the whole page just doesn't fit under the camera. And then fit the lower wings. Lower wings, various flap options detailed down here, 32 and 33. Still messing about flaps. It does give you the angles in common with all the FX books. You do get information like uh, control surface deflections and flap angles, which is quite nice. Fitting the undercarriage there. And undercarriage doors and again a scrap view with the angles that the undercarriage doors should be at wheels and tyres the gun blisters more armaments air brakes etc and we go with all the tanks and the pito and the clear parts you do have a one piece closed canopy or a two piece fully opened and that's the build done very logical very simple construction sequence it does look good and now for the paint options There's three schemes available in the kit so this is the headline version the aircraft flown under the t or through the tower bridge um, number one squadron which at that time was based at West Raynham in Norfolk a standard scheme for the time got the nice squadron badge detail on the nose and the tricolour roundels nice and bright so it's dark green and dark sea grey over light aircraft grey and then for schemes A and B the stencils are shown and I don't quite know how Mr Mock has managed it but there are a million stencils <laughs> so yes position of common stencil data for A and B schemes second scheme four squadron Royal Air Force go to slow Germany 1961 same scheme but just bigger bolder squadron markings on it I do like the four squadron markings that's scheme B and scheme C nice addition actually fleet requirements and aircraft direction unit FRADU Royal RNAS Yeovilton Somerset 1976 so this is a Royal Navy hunter and it's in the appropriate Royal Navy scheme extra dark sea grey over white um, same roundels 
very attractive scheme and one which would, will does suit the aircraft beautifully. The Hawker Hunter is just one of those, if ever there's chat online or in person, anywhere you like to look about the most beautiful aircraft ever made or the most graceful aircraft ever made, the ones that always get mentioned without any doubt, every time, the Hunter, the Spitfire, the Concorde, they just do. And it is one of those that just, it just works, doesn't it, aesthetically, it is beautiful. And the back page, we have another plethora of stencils, but this time for Scheme C. So, having mentioned stencils, let's have a look at the actual decal sheet. There they all are. I really haven't had any issues with Airfix decals in the longest time, and these appear to be exactly the same so I can't imagine there'll be any trouble. We do have instrument panel up here and then all of those stencils and placard panels up in a separate box. National markings, squadron markings and then all the serials and in a very very nice touch you've got unbroken serials and snipped up ones so if you modelling it with the undercarriage down which of course the vast majority of people do it saves the effort and the brain ache of trying to figure out the decals over the sort of undercarriage doors and what have you they're already snipped up and numbered for you to use and then there's some more placards down here which will be either for the undercarriage or the weapons I presume very very nice decal sheet indeed So now, as I always do, with uh, a quick snip, I will throw the sprues around. Now, I'll, I'll take off the major components uh, and tape everything together so we can have a look at how this construction will proceed, having looked at the parts on the sprues. Now, I've got the main parts off and as you can see, it's actually very, very simple. Just as the main constructional elements of this kit really breaks down to not very many parts at all. Wings down here, doesn't all fit. Um, and one of the reasons I like doing quick snips actually is because taking these parts off and cleaning them up, and I should point out that by clean up, all I'm doing is taking the sprue stubs off. I've not preemptively cleaned them up in any other way yet. But by doing even just that, I'm looking at the parts closely and all the different angles and I spot loads of things that don't get noticed on a sort of quick look type glance over the sprues because you only see them from sort of the one angle and, you know. I took the canopy off. I'll um, show you how to remove this clouding from the chafing. It is indeed damaged where it, where it had already started to try and disassemble itself from the sprue in the packaging it's not terrifically obvious whilst it's not painted but as soon as you put any paint on that frame that will be seen so we'll look at that and on these are fine the tail planes uh, the flash now it's a one-piece tail plane which is nice I like that how do you clean this off well for the most part I'll just sort of gently scrape slightly up and get the worst of it off that way. So I don't want to lose the shape and if I start sanding on things it's very easy to destroy the shape quite quickly and just to finish off a, a, a reasonably fine sanding stick, run it along the edge because I don't want to change the shape of the part, I just want to remove the flash. If I use a coarser sander, I'm liable to just sand a great big flat into the trail edge, uh, trailing edge. And the trailing edges on, the, on this kit generally are creditably quite fine. So 
we just very very gently run the sanding stick along the trailing edge and just try and smooth everything off a bit and remove that flash but only that flash and try and get everything nice and square I think unfortunately it needs a touch more work than that because it's sort of it's not a technical description but furry is the best I can come up with just on this corner the top surface of the kit part is just sort of I mean it's furry I'll bring it up as close as I can I really don't know if it's going to come across but it, it it's sort of delaminating almost the very very outer surface of the plastic is kind of peeling back it's odd so sand it smooth and then I'm going to use extra thin on it just paint a little extra thin across that area where it's a little odd and hopefully yeah smooths it out and sort of sticks those very bits back down again and that's that pretty much dealt with we have similar issues with flash and general oddness on the left side of the main wing moulding all the way along this aileron aperture you see how uneven that is and there's a complete web of flash between the two hinge parts the sort of representation of the aileron hinge which on the other side looks like that so this all has to be carefully trimmed and sanded back to get it smooth, straight and I think honestly this is probably slightly short shot also it's not great I don't need to clean that up for the purposes of what I'm going to do the build so I'll leave that for Matt to enjoy Another thing with this main wing part, um, the edge mould seam. So if you look carefully around this area where it joins to the front, you can see that the mould seam's right on that edge. I haven't cleaned it off yet. In my experience, they tend to need to be cleaned off for a clean fit, but we'll leave it for now. Same, same deal at the back. I don't know if it's obvious. But there's a little flash overhang it's so difficult to angle it you can see just under my finger you've got that same edgewise mould seam running round which produces a very subtle step in the part sometimes the step protrudes into the joint and sometimes the step goes away this one mostly goes away but the flash here is causing a protrusion Hopefully that's obvious that definitely needs cleaning off and we'll do that now just trim it gently with a decent sharp scalpel blade and that's like gone so this one's got a protruding sort of the surface of the kit goes away from the joint on this one on this on the front edge there's a protrusion into the joint with that edge mounted mould seam Uh, there's more of the same really with the fuselage halves. Uh, the most notable part here, the back edge of, of the canopy aperture, the mould seam around that corner has just turned into a random chunk of protruding plastic along there, right in the top here where you can see it. We'll see how everything fits together before doing any trimming there. Other than that though, the moulding seems to be pretty decent throughout. Um, nothing, There's nothing massively wrong with it. It's all a little bit basic, but quite nicely done. You know, the, the edges are all quite fine. Uh, it looks like it'll go together okay. So let's get us started on that. With the Tamiya tape. Thank you. 
you probably heard that clip that it's a little bit tight but the click was these tabs going into position hold it together with tape quite a neat design though because with the joint being on this edge inside there's not really any need to worry about sanding that if you look down there there's there's going to be a corner anyway so that that will be fine the other one together that one isn't so tight so no click so that's two intakes Rather than locating pins, the fuselage has a series of interlocking tabs. And these serve to align the joint vertically as well as fore and aft. And that is a very decent joint throughout, which I think is perfectly obvious. See, when I mentioned basic mouldings, when you look at the belly here, you can see how all that recessed panel detail is all a little bit agricultural, agricultural when it comes close to the seam. And there's also a significant amount of texture to the surface in various areas, but you can see how these scribings are all just a little bit on the heavy side, and some of them even sort of form into chunks. It's not, it's not the best. Very, very decent indeed. That gap there with glue wouldn't be at all. I will put a piece of tape on it. I'm conscious that the tape might cause the wing not to fit very well, but we shall see soon enough. Okay, the other part with the with this like basic sort of moulding, uh, the gun troughs at the front here. Again, I don't know if it's obvious from the footage, but they're not um, they're not moulded as a constant curve. That aperture is kind of straight in and then straight out, and there's also no effort to represent a gun port at the back of it. It's just a it should have a hole at least at the back here where the cannon sticks through. So those again. A, a little bit basic, not the best execution. Could do with a little help. So the intakes fit here into these holes. I don't know if they're going to hold themselves in place or not without any glue. There's only one way to find out. I think the definitive answer to that is absolutely not. Whoopsie. I'll just hold that in place from the inside. You can see how that way it fits to the fuselage at the front you it gives you that sort of boundary intake it's all really quite not quite nicely depicted and um, this part you could thin a little with a scalpel just to add a little finesse 
much and clearly there wouldn't be a gap if we had glued these intake pieces together. I'm just going to sit and ponder for a few minutes and see if I can figure out a way to tape these that will still allow me to fit the wings successfully. Blue tack or something like that. There, by the magic of blue tack, we've got those hanging in there. Pop that down for a second. Let's put this tail cone together. This has standard locating pegs. Pop into position very smoothly. Like so. Having trimmed that flash off this rear join, I'm hopeful that this will just pop in. Now be aware that there is no form of alignment to ensure that this fin base area lines up with the fins. Make sure and eyeball that when you when gluing. could best be described as a tad untidy. Now note that the fin base area the fin base area here is very very slightly wider than the area moulded onto the top of this tail. It's only slight, a lot of people aren't going to be too fussed but with test fitting we can spot these bef these sort of things before they become an issue so you could if you wished add a piece of plastic or something in here just to spread this apart very very slightly so that the, the part aligns properly along this joint here so the width is the same and you don't end up with this sort of an undercut at the base of the fin it may negatively affect the fit here a little but it's actually considerably easier to clean this joint than to than this one and to rescribe it so that's what i would suggest there let's get some tape on there the fit is okay it certainly isn't good enough in my opinion anyway that you could realistically expect to not fill and sand and rescribe this entire circumferential joint but that is very much my opinion and obviously everyone's got different tolerances for tolerances so that's that on looking very huntery Add the nose cone, I've just picked a random one. Should hopefully pop onto the front without too much bother. The creaking sound you can hear is indicative that the parts are too tight somewhere. That something's interfering with the joint. It is a small amount of flash on this bottom corner, but I do not think that that's the culprit. If you press hard enough, it does go back into position. I think the issue. Yes, there's a, a sort of um, ridge all the way around the inside, it's slightly tapered for some reason but there's also a, a slight ridge all the way around the inside of this part so to make that fit 
easily we'd either have to use something like this and run it around the inside and remove that ridge which it's not terrifically difficult but it's also not terrifically easy because of the curve but let's just do some initial trimming in that manner it's just, if nothing else it's showing you where the ridge is also showing why the number 15 blade is quite so useful I think <laughs> just be careful of your fingers doing this don't put too much force on it so that if you do slip it doesn't <laughs> across and <laughs> remove a digit see how much difference that's made straight away much much better the other way and it isn't really massively easier we can clearance this flange I'm going to say it this also has a light ridge on it and this one is just done just do it with a little scrape scrape like this Flattening the joint face out and effectively steepening the taper slightly, which just allows that nose cone to slip into position a bit more easily. great success it's still a bit tight and it would it needs a little bit more to actually just slip on really really easily but it's a good enough fit now that the addition of your normal normal amount of liquid cement and a, just a touch of pressure would see that fit absolutely fine Right then, primitive truth I suppose, we'll see if this girt wing will pop on easily or not. Drum roll please. That was me, didn't quite have that in the right place. All right then, underneath. So you've got a butt here, a butt joint here. That's as low as the back of the wing needs to go. The intakes on both sides marry up very creditably with the underside of the wing there. Well enough that in combination with that being a demarcation for your external colour in there wouldn't be terrifically noticeable uh, it wouldn't be won't be a won't be a terrifically noticeable joint I have just snapped off this aerial sorry Matt but I've got to be honest I'm not a big fan of molded on aerials I never have been this is one of the reasons why but the other reason why if I just Gently remove that. If you look at the area where I've removed it from, the
there's a line that goes to the front and rear of it in the moulding and being as close as that to the joint line, seam line it would be so difficult to clean this seam up properly with that area in place so what I tend to do with things like that is to remove them in the first place anyway so I can clean everything up properly and I can either reattach the included aerial or scratch build another one and pop it back into position so I'm going to wrap the little aerial in a piece of tape and put it back in the box so that when Matt wonders where the aerial is it's it's here just let him know if he asks you all right on the top the joint is variable it's not bad at all in fairness it really isn't bad it's going to need a, li a little bit of tidying i think it's fair to say but overall it's not not terrible the worst part is just here there's a bit of a gap there but it's quite an easy one to clean up i think Oh, it's not terrible. And over here, I cut out the the kit includes some moulded closed undercarriage doors, which is really nice. I like it when kits do this. Uh, it is nice to depict some aircraft in flight. Sometimes that's that's what they're supposed to do after all said and done. So I, I thought I would see if those fit. I'm afraid to say they really don't. Um, they're just slightly too big to fit into the aperture. It shows promise, definitely, but needs a little trimming to fit properly. And again, it's not being my kit. I'm not. I just squeeze that up in there. You can see it fits fits all right once it's in. But it's just a tad too big. It'd be quite a simple matter of just gently trimming around the wheel bay edge until it just fits in nicely but again it's not my kit so I'm not going to so that's slightly disappointing let's pop these into position here we've got locating tabs should slide into the fuselage there and they do And it squeezes together and lines up with the rest of the ring quite nicely, thank you. Let's get some tape on so I can... Again, it's gone into place quite nicely. This very rear rearward part is sit, sitting away from the fuselage a little, but with glue again, that's going to pop into position without any real trouble. Having pushed that into the fuselage, my, my concern was it might not line up along the wing, but it actually does beautifully. And the intake is really, it's really quite nice, I think. This joint will need some work, but it's very much in the realm of a bit of Mr. Surfacer and a cotton bud or maybe a touch of sanding. There's, there's no need for real filler to go in there. It is quite tight. And that one is too tight. I'm not going to force that anymore. It's actually a slight sort of stress riser coming off the corner of that pocket. And the reason it's so tight is, is, is easy to see when you look at the part, but again, it's those edge mounted mould seams here. Can you see that that tab isn't square? It's not square in this direction and it's not square in this direction. So it's just a little, get myself where you can see what I'm doing. Always cut towards a friend, obviously. A little trim to get rid of that extra extra shreds of plastic that we don't want. Just tidy air. 
everything up a little bit. It's the same here, this aft edge especially. It's just not it's not square so it's making the tab bigger as you push it into the fuselage it's getting bigger and that's why it won't go in. Good success. And again, lines up with the rest of the ring nicely. This is absolutely the most uh, unforgiving way of putting something together as well because a lot of times with things like this, just the addition of that little bit of glue that you put on the part or that you've put into the joint as you pull it together perhaps it just helps it all sort of lubricate lubricate into place and there we have it same deal this side these two sort of fillet parts they're standing away from the fuselage side of touch because there's no glue but as you can see there's minimal pressure required to just pop them into place and there's going to be minimal work required on these wing root joints Last thing then is the tower planes, and I don't suppose these will just sit in place for us, or they just actually will. Yeah, it's quite tight as well. Tighter than I'd like. There we go. One hunter. Certainly looks the part, doesn't it? I have been lucky enough to see one of these built, albeit as a two seat version using the aerocraft conversion parts, uh, up alongside an Academy 48 scale hunter. Because previously, I believe I'm right in saying the only 48 scale hunter around was the academy one and this this thing blows it into the weeds absolutely blows it into the weeds the academy kit in comparison is just portly it's like a it's like a hunter that has been eating too much middle-aged spread and it's very very obvious when you look at them together how much more sleek and lithe the airfix kit representation is much much more prototypical honestly just pop that canopy on to see how that fits now because the canopy actually fits over the top of the spine that lump of um, flash and what have you is not getting in the way and that does sit in place beautifully as well really finishes the job off now let's just quickly show you a little tip for polishing out this chaffage nice and easy what you need is a little bit of wax I've got this stuff which I got from heroboy.com a relatively local special shop that specializes in uh, cars and bikes actually uh, the Brazilian it's just pure carnauba wax you can use any let's say car paint polish car wax but please do test it because some a lot of them have various additives to help sort of cut the paint and you actually want one that does have a tiny bit of cut in it not to the extent of things like myrrh uh, or tea cut but just sort of a normal automotive wax polish for the paintwork there is just a tiny tiny bit of cut in those which helps them to sort of remove the light layer of oxidation that the paint film builds up on the paint film and it dulls it well that little amount of cut or ability to cut is what will remove these tiny tiny cloudy scratches in these canopies I'm using a cotton bud 
to apply it and I keep going out of shot I'm so sorry to apply it and sort of rub it in we're polishing here in the proper sense of the word and then buff it back off just get the worst of it off with the other end give it a second and use a nice cloth this is just a microfiber cloth same sort of thing you'd use on your car as well and give it a buff Hopefully you can see there that has removed and or mitigated the worst of those scratches just as fast as that. So there you go, the Airfix 48 scale Hunter just recently re-released and, and available in this country for about £40. Um, I like it, it looks good. It looks reasonably well detailed, it certainly isn't going to blow anybody away straight out of the box I don't think, but it's not too bad. I am, however, a bit disappointed by th by the quality issues th that I've shown you with this. Uh, none of them, with the exception of this area here, actually that might be a tad tricky. None of them are massively difficult to fix, but the issue I I think I think a lot of people have is that with a modern kit at a modern price, we shouldn't have to that's a personal thing it doesn't bother me too much I, I quite I quite enjoy the opportunity to have a bit of impact actually on how good the finished model looks so I don't mind it too much but I know that a lot of people do I personally and again it, it's it's a very subjective point I personally feel that 47 pounds is a bit too much um, if the quality was on point with that price then maybe but it isn't quite there so thank you so much for joining me on this latest quick snip review thanks for watching thanks for everyone's continuing support i do really really appreciate it and thank you so much again to matt for lending me one of his model kits to ruin and with all of that said it only remains for me to say until next time look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out Thank <laughs> you.